Thank you for joining us. This year marks the 50th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between Germany and Israel. On May 12, 1965, the two countries exchanged ambassadors for the first time, and the relationship between Germany and Israel has only grown stronger ever since. Today, Germany is Israel's largest trading partner in Europe. The two nations also collaborate in the fields of science, security, culture, arts, counter-terrorism, and other, and have developed a unique interest in each other's cultures. Our guest today is German Ambassador Volker Anding, who will share his views on these subjects following these messages. Reading Life Extension magazine will keep you on top of medical discoveries that may save your life. Life Extension's track record since 1980 shows they are decades ahead of conventional medicine identifying proven methods to prevent the diseases of aging. Life Extension Magazine will empower you to take control of your health and longevity. Call the number on your screen and find out how to receive a one-year free subscription to Life Extension Magazine. Rejuvenate your skin from the inside out and the outside in. With 98.6% naturally derived ingredients, you experience vibrant skin from day one. Introducing the Alavita Regenerating Trio, a moisturizing and anti-aging solution. These three innovative products reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. Alavita, a beautiful merging of nature and science. Learn more online today. At Gardens Wellness Center, we provide a full menu of holistic services under one roof. Services to heal the body through chiropractic care, acupuncture, and colon hydrotherapy and services to heal the mind through hypnotherapy, neurolinguistic programming, and life coaching. We practice functional and Chinese medicine and offer a full herbal pharmacy. Visit us today and take charge of your health. Find magic again. Sprout by HP. With Intel RealSense technology inside, now you can bend the rules of creativity outside. With us now is Ambassador Volker Anding. Sir, it's a pleasure and privilege to have you with us today. It's a pleasure to be with you. It so happens my parents were born in Germany, aber mein Deutsch ist ganz furchtbar. These are the only words I'm going to say in German on a program in the United States. Herzlichen Glückwunsch zu Ihrem guten Deutsch. Und es freut mich, dass Sie das Deutsche immer noch äh, praktizieren und, auf, und bewahren. Thank you, sir. Germany is close to my heart. A land of great culture, science, music, literature. We are here at the Biltmore Hotel in Miami, Florida, having a spontaneous conversation. And I'd like to ask you in general, how you see in this day and age the cultural cooperation between Germany and Israel? Well, the cultural cooperation is very close and intense, but I would like to put it into the context because uh, the uh, uh, relations between Germany and Israel are very comprehensive and multifaceted. It's not only culture, it is youth exchange, it is business, it is the economy, it is even military and intelligence cooperation um, so there is and then scientific cooperation and I think we have to put the cultural cooperation in this context for many many years young people from Germany have gone to kibbutzim in Israel 
And as you know, we just celebrated 50 years of diplomatic relations between Israel and, and Germany. But already before the official establishment of diplomatic relations, there had been youth exchanges and close relations between the two countries. And now, as we celebrated the 50th anniversary just recently, um, it has been said many times that the uh, relations between Germany and Israel are so strong that Germany is the second most important partner of Israel in the world, right after the United States, of course. This cooperation is absolutely essential, of course, and not long ago, Prime Minister Merkel said some very interesting things with regard to this subject. Please share with our audience. Yeah, just recently there was uh, the interparliamentary um, conference uh, to fight anti-Semitism held in Berlin. And uh, the and German Chancellor Angela Merkel gave a very important speech uh, at this occasion. And she underlined, of course, that we all worldwide have to fight anti-Semitism. And she put it into a larger context because, of course, we have this huge influx of refugees, political refugees uh, from Syria and other countries of the area. And she put that into this context that, of course, anti-Semitism has to be fought, as we have done very, uh, and I think quite successfully in the last couple of years. But now there is a new situation. And we have to put this fight uh, against anti-Semitism in the context also, the fight against uh, racism and uh, xenophobia. You know, sir, I'm the son of Holocaust survivors. My, my mother, Nomi Blumenfeld, was born in Oberschlesien. My father was born in Charlottenburg, Berlin. And um, history is what it is. Things happen in life and in the world. Some people do bad things, and we have to move on in life. And not everybody is guilty of what other people do. And I, for one, realize this, understand this. And I feel, again, as I said earlier, the friendship of Germany to Israel is of paramount importance. And I think it is irrational and wrong for anybody to harbor any many, many decades old resentment. It is ridiculous. What are your views on that? And of course, we realize that the Holocaust is one of the great catastrophe, catastrophes in not only German history and German Israel history, but in world history. And we have acknowledged this and we try to make up to the degree possible that you can make up such a horrible um, situation. Um, we have acknowledged our responsibility. We teach uh, the uh, horrors of Holocaust in the schools. I heard about this the first time when I was 15 years of age in my gymnasium. And uh, we uh, also take this responsibility very serious as far as financial contributions to uh, uh, victims of the Holocaust and their families are concerned. And one thing that I think is really very important in this context is that Germany welcomes Jews who, select, uh, who decide to choose Germany as the country to form a future for their family and for themselves. And Germany does, does not um, make propaganda to attract Jews to Germany, but many Jewish families decide that they think Germany is a very good country to be. And so we have today about 200,000 uh, Jews in Germany, about 125,000 are formerly members of Jewish communities, the largest one being in Berlin with about 12,500 uh, members. And of course, the federal government, the state governments, and the local city governments, they make certain contributions to help these Jewish families settle in Germany. And this is something that is, I think, one of the most fascinating developments in recent history between our two countries. Absolutely, and most appreciated. And again, <clears throat> my views on this matter, I just shared a moment ago. Let's talk about future events and future cultural interactivity. What is occurring in the near future with Israel and Germany? Well, Germany has stated multiple times that, of course, we are in favor of uh, the uh, right to exist and uh, we guarantee 
uh, the right of the state of Israel to exist and we uh, try to do everything in our power to make sure that Israel thrives and survives. We're also in favor of the two-state solution and we would hope that there will be a two-state solution in the near future. I know it is very difficult. Um, Germany has had traditionally uh, not only good relations with Israel, but we also try to maintain uh, good relations with uh, the surrounding Arab countries. And I think that can be a very helpful aspect. It is not that we uh, try to be too, uh, well, hesitant in either, in one way or the other. We stand firmly behind Israel, but at the same time, I think it is helpful that we have good relations with the surrounding Arab countries and we try to instill some kind of reason in the dialogue uh, concerning the survival and future existence of the State of Israel. I fully agree with what you're saying. I would like to ask you to share with our audience a little about your background. You were the German ambassador to uh, Montevideo to Uruguay and other posts. Tell us of your experiences as a diplomat and ambassador, sir. Well, we are here at the Biltmore Hotel in Coral Gables, and uh, the reason why my wife and I live here now is that I used to be the German Consul General here in Miami. And uh, of course, I was ambassador also to Panama and to Uruguay. I had served in other posts here in the United States, in San Francisco, Detroit, and New York, uh, but also at the German mission to NATO in Brussels, in West Africa, and um, on and off back home in Bonn, and later on when the German capital was moved to Berlin, of course in Berlin, uh, in uh, headquarters in the German uh, Foreign Office. It uh, was fascinating to me to uh, get to know this country, in particular the United States. And when I graduated from Diplomatic Academy, I let everybody know who wanted to hear it or not that I wanted my first post to be in the United States of America. Because at that time, this was in the early 1970s, at the height of the Cold War, we uh, realized in Germany and in Europe that, of course, the United States was the guarantor of our security, not only militarily, but also economically. Uh, we had very close relations. And so I wanted to be in this uh, country, in the United States, in my first posting. And of course, my wish was granted. And I was on multiple posts here. And I am married to an American girl. Well, that, of course, is heartwarming. But I'd like to ask you a little bit more about your current activities. You are still very much involved with many different organizations at the Max Planck Institute and more. Tell us, please. please. Yeah, uh, after my retirement in 2007, because we have a mandatory retirement age of 65, um, I still keep on being very active in international relations. One aspect is what you just mentioned, the Max Planck Institute in Jupiter, Florida. Uh, which is the first uh, formal and full branch of the Max Planck Institute in the United States, dealing with neurology research and biotech. And I helped to a small extent uh, to establish this uh, Max Planck Institute here in the United States when I was Consul General in Germany. But I also have very close relations to the Florida International University, where I just recently uh, was a lead judge in a uh, European Union um, oriented contest on and challenge um, for high school students and that is a nationwide uh, challenge on called Euro Challenge with the uh, support of the Federal Reserve Bank and uh, the winners here at uh, FIU uh, with schools from all over Florida go to New York City and then those winners uh, go to uh, Washington DC to the permanent mission of the European Union being recognized uh, as um, persons who really have dealt in extensively with European Union questions. At the University of Miami, I'm very much involved with the Latin American study group. 
Um, I also do something that is not international politics. I am an active member of the Alhambra Orchestra. It's a symphony orchestra, the community orchestra of Miami-Dade County. I have my own string quartet and we do play in public concerts. So I have a quite uh, wide range of activities. I would like to mention one aspect that is very close to my heart. As a German diplomat, I have um, had very close relations to the representatives of Israel at every post that I held, the, German, uh, the Israeli ambassador or consul general. And after my retirement, I have maintained these close contacts to the Consulate General of Israel here in Miami, and in particular to the executive director and his team at the American Jewish Committee here in Miami. And this is one of the great pleasures of my retirement, that I continue to have these close relations. And this was recently recognized by the Consulate General of Israel, and they in, uh, they transmitted to me an official invitation of the government of Israel to attend the Global Forum on Anti-Semitism in Jerusalem last year. Unfortunately, I could not attend because my mother-in-law was very, very seriously ill at the time and she died in the meantime. So I could not attend, but I think it was uh, very um, welcome, of course, that the uh, government of Israel and the consulate here in uh, Miami recognized my continued involvement with German-Israel and German-Jewish relations. This is most interesting. I'd like us to continue, but we have to pause for these commercial messages. We'll be right back. I'm Bill Falloon, co-founder of the Life Extension Foundation. We're the world's largest anti-aging consumer medical group. For the first time in history, we can invite you to an event called the Revolution against aging and death. This is an event that we are co-sponsoring because science has reached a level where we can talk realistically about converting older people into much younger individuals from a biological standpoint. It's gonna emanate in San Diego, August 4th through 7th at the Revolution Against Aging and Death Conference. The first conference, by the way, that Life Extension has co-sponsored since 1986. It's that exciting for us to put out this kind of an effort to invite you to attend and meet the Life Extension staff and scientists. I encourage you to log on to radfest.com, enroll, and spend the most exciting weekend of your life. We're back with Ambassador Volker Anding. Sir, tell us more about the organizations you're involved with here, and especially, actually, in Germany. I myself would love to visit the museum in Berlin. Please tell us. Yeah, as I mentioned before, of course, I have very close contact still with the American Jewish Committee here in Miami. And uh, the AJC is working very closely on the national level and here in Miami with an important German foundation, the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung, which is a foundation closely linked to the Christian Democratic Union, the party of uh, Chancellor Angela Merkel and they help uh, very much setting up uh, closer contacts between uh, leading politicians and community leaders in Germany and in the United States, members of the Jewish um, community. And I have been involved with this foundation and with other political foundations. And this is, by the way, an institution um, that many countries around the world envy us for because uh, the, these foundations are not government agencies, they are not political parties, but they are closely linked to these parties. And so they can uh, also sometimes, in 
certain countries be close to a, an opposition um, uh, groups um, without being uh, in trouble. But of course, this is not the case here in the United States and with the AJC. Um, in uh, Berlin, uh, for many years, there has been an office of the American Jewish Committee, and they are very active, and they cooperate very closely with the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung. And I would highly recommend when you uh, go to Germany to have uh, contact with them, and they will help you very much. Uh, I want to mention two other institutions in Germany that are very important in the German-Jewish context, which is, of course, the Holocaust Memorial at a very central, one of the most central locations in Berlin, right next to the Brandenburg Gate, right next to the American Embassy, the British Embassy, the French Embassy. And so it's a very visible, very large area commemorating the horrors of the Holocaust. The other institution is the Jewish Museum which was inaugurated in 2001 and uh, alone its architecture already uh, was so impressive that for a while it was even considered to have this um, museum, just a building, without any exhibitions because it showed in such an impressive way the uh, horrors and the, uh, the terrible things that happened during the Holocaust. Of course, now it is a regular muse museum, and it's a very important one, visited by many, many thousand uh, persons per in, in the year. And I would think that this is one of the best um, uh, examples to show the 2,000 years of very fruitful, most of the time, uh, German-Jewish relations, unfortunately marred by, of course, the horrors of the Third Reich. But in this Jewish museum in Berlin, 2,000 years of very largely, very fruitful, very productive, and very good German-Jewish relations are being portrayed. From Mendelssohn and on, and prior, of course, I presume, Yes, and by the way, the AJC um, uh, office in Berlin is in the Mendelssohn building right at Potsdamer Platz in the heart of Berlin. Well, I have to visit it. I really would yes. like to. We should go together sometime. Yes, okay. I would love to accompany you and just share some of my experiences also with the synagogues and the very active Jewish life in Berlin. Before we conclude, Tell us a little more that we would like possibly to share with our audience, if you don't mind. Well, the things that I would like to share are the uh, cultural um, activities here in Miami with the Jewish Museum, with um, active uh, participation of um, the uh, synagogues, the temples, and as I said, our orchestra plays in some of the temples here in Miami. So we have a very close personal relationship with the institutions here. In Berlin, many people go to the activities in the synagogues, and so there's a very strong exchange between the German and Jewish communities. Before we conclude, I'm going to say this again. Not only would I love to go to Berlin, visit Germany with you, but you should come with me to Israel. And we'll do both, perhaps. I want to thank you very, very much. It would be a pleasure. Today. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.
This concludes our special show for today with Ambassador Volker Anding. I'm Richard Peretz. Thank you for being with us.